Okay, so let's go to central measures of dispersion. This is where the heart is getting into this. This is where we're really getting into some, some good area. Um, number one, never, ever just show your mean without measures of dispersion in my book, okay? It's a, it's a pet peeve because it doesn't tell the whole story. You really need the range at a minimum to show what's going on with your data, and you probably need something called standard deviation, which we're going to get into in a second, okay? So as we said, range is just max and minimum value. It's nice to give a broad sense of the data, what you're working with, um, but clearly it has some issues. Mainly, the issue is that you might just have an outlier at the lower end and an outlier at the higher end, and that doesn't really tell you about the average deviations, the average spread of your data, what Megan in our Baja course calls the average spread outedness of your data set. So we're gonna look at that in a second. That's what standard deviation will do. It's the typical deviation from the mean, okay? And it gives you a better sense of things than the range. You certainly can use both of them. And I'm gonna give you guys an example of, um, of, of what it would look like if you used, uh, you know, if, if you use both of those in a, in a report. Okay. Um, all right, so. Here's the standard deviation formula. Um, please do not uh, uh, log off at this point <laughs> when you see this. A lot of people don't like formulas with Latin uh, letters and things like that in them, but this one's really easy. I just wanna break it down, build um, hopefully your confidence when you see other formulas and scientific papers in different places that you just feel like you can break it down and understand it. And it's also gonna get us to the concept of a normal distribution, which we need to understand. Um, so S in this formula stands for standard deviation. Um, this uh, capital E symbol, sigma, is show, telling you to sum up the data. You guys are familiar with that, I'm sure. The N at the top here is saying from the whole sample size, sample set. N is often uh, denotes the sample size or the whole sample that you've measured. And then this little italic I equals one is saying start with the first measure and then go through the entire sample, okay? So sum basically everything. Almost always you're gonna do that, but if you were a mathematician, you wanted them only to sam sum up samples two through nine, you could show that. Uh, this little X sub one is saying each individual value, and then X with this line on it, with a, uh, uh, the bar on top, is the mean of the sample. So we are going to take all the individual samples and subtract the mean from them. We're gonna square that, okay? We're gonna sum it after squaring it, and then we're gonna divide by n minus one, which is the sample size, and then take the square root. Why do we do all that? Well, let's take a look, and hopefully this will maybe make sense from a conceptual um, look at this. Let's just go with the non-safe glass building. Um, some of you, if you downloaded this sheet earlier, you might already have some data in here because I was, I was testing some of this. Um, so in any case, if you already have data, you can just delete it, you can follow it. Um, most of you probably don't. So in any case, so here we have each individual value. These are those X sub I values that were in that formula. The mean, is three. And then you can always type in a simple formula equals, and then you just do a cell minus, it works just like a calculator. So three minus three is zero, okay? You drag that down, and now you have these uh, figures. You can see that the first measure didn't deviate from the mean at all. It was the mean, okay? The second one deviated by one, third one by negative one, and the last one by zero as well. So you can see the average deviation for the second data set is pretty low, probably, right? Especially relative to this other safe glass building. Um, so if we just summed this now, um, uh, what'll happen is it's gonna add up to zero. And so that'll always happen if you were to do standard deviation without squaring these values, because you're gonna have negative values, things on the negative side of the, um, of the mean and things on the positive side. 
So that's why we're going to square these. So you do another equals, you highlight that first value, which is the deviation. You're going to square it using, I use um, shift and six on my PC to put in that symbol for squaring. Hit two, hit enter, and then you drop that down. So now you've got um, some positive values. When you sum that up, we are gonna have two. Let's go back to the formula and just look at where we're at. We've looked at the deviations of every individual uh, measure from the mean. We've squared them and we've summed them. So we have the numerator here and that numerator is two, okay? So um, now we're going to look at this final part, n minus 1. Our sample size, you guys know already, is 4. We have 4 measures. It's minus 1. That essentially is a fudge factor. It's kind of just put in there because you didn't sample the entire population in most cases. Um, so it's going to inflate our estimate of standard deviation as a penalty for the fact that no one can sample usually the whole population. Um, there's more we can do with that. Um, I am seeing the chat here. I am aware other people might be explaining this better, so thanks if we're doing that. And um, also, can we just use the standard deviation formula? Of course, um, but I do want you guys to just get a sense of this. Um, so let's just do calculate this out. You're going to take 2 divided by 3. You got 0.667, and then we're going to take the square root of that. Is the square root formula of 0.667 repeating and that is our standard deviation is 0 0.81 um, so that is our standard deviation if you don't believe me I hope this is right let's go here equals standard deviation there's the formula standard deviation there's different ones okay but we're just going to use the basic formula, highlight your area, close it off, and 0 0.8, you can adjust always the number of decimal places in spreadsheets. So let's drop that out. And there we have it. The much easier way is to just calculate it. But I wanted to show you guys the formula because I think it gets you understanding, hopefully, how this formula came to be why it exists, and it will tie into the normal distribution. So we drag this over, and we see that uh, the standard deviation of, of the safe glass building is 3.83, if we would round that. Right, maybe just put those like that, like that. And uh, so now we've got another measure of variation for those two buildings, okay? 